welcome back everybody and happy new year hope you had a good christmas um i did have a good christmas um it goes quick doesn't it um and yeah welcome back to another episode of the insect nerd where we talk about insects um i have leaf insects stick insects mantises um i also like to talk about crested gecko um my crested gecko pharaoh uh, my white tree frogs, Neville and Luna, um, as well. So I talk about a range of things. Um, unfortunately, I don't vlog as much as I want to because there is just no time with uni. Um, so I try and do it monthly or so, and I do apologise. I'd love to do it more, but unfortunately, that's just not the case. Like it's just too busy. Hey, um, and in the spirit of this video, I have got lovely stag beetle earrings. Um, why stag beetles? Because we are going to learn today how to build a rainbow stag beetle breeding enclosure. Now, those of you have asked me how to do this, and I have promised you a video and I haven't got around to it, so today's the day. So what you will need is you will need a plastic tub. So a plastic tub uh, of 25 to 30 litres. This is a 30 litre tub, it's nice and deep, I've already put soil in there. Um, not all the soil, there's got to be more, but I just wanted to sort of start it, um, half start it rather than you actually me just fill a pot with soil. <laughs> um, so you need that. Obviously I've got the lid to that too. Um, you also need your beetles to put in at some point. Those are my rainbow stags. Uh, they're trying to make like that. <laughs> Um, and you need something to put your jelly in. Now, I, I did this video before. Um, unfortunately, what happened um, was um, there was noises in the background, um, which then ruined the audio. And so I couldn't post that. So I've had to try again. Uh, hopefully, I'll be lucky this time. Uh, but yeah, the jelly was in, has been in there for a couple of days. Um, it does last a couple of days. Jelly or fruit. Um, I wouldn't really use fruit because pests like to, you know, fruit goes off and then flies come and then you get has a whole issue of flies in your soil and it can be quite unpleasant. But anyway, that's that's sort of get to it. Also, you need a spray bottle um, and you need wherever they've gone. Give me a minute. And you need, sorry, you need some logs, preferably oak. Um, not pine because it can be quite toxic to beetle larvae, um, especially when they're sort of, you know, <laughs> wriggling out of the, well, they're, you know, the logs are actually for the beetles to dig into, so they make a little hole, uh, normally in the softer bits. It needs to be soft, wood, not hard, because they won't be able to get through it, um, and it needs to be rotten wood, sorry, um, and then they make a little hole where they will lay the eggs. And they cover it with soil. Um, I'll see if I can find a picture to put on there. If not, I'm sorry, but it's yeah. Anyway, <laughs> I have so many photos on my phone now. I'm not sure I can find it. Um, but yeah, so that's what we need. We also need flake soil, obviously. Uh, flake soil you can find from eBay um, and other beetle breeders around. Um, unfortunately, I haven't started making beetle beetle um, substrate that well flake soil um, because I just haven't figured that out yet but I'd love to try um, yeah but it is very expensive stuff and it is it should really be used for stag beetles um, please don't use potting soil for stag beetles or rhino beetles um, they will get very ill um, I mean you can use it for substrate uh, for adult beetles but um, make sure one it's pesticide free and two, you know, don't use it for grubs or a breeding box because if the grubs are laid loose in the soil, because sometimes stag beetles do that, not always, but sometimes they can, and the larvae crawl out, uh, they will get very sick. Um, so yeah, please stick to flake soil. It's worth it, trust me. It's great quality stuff. Um, that potting soil is not. <laughs> um, so we're gonna start with what I did first was so you've got your tub you put holes around it first obviously i haven't done i'm not doing a step by step because i just feel like we're going to be here forever um i'm just doing sort of a simple instruction video um 
well, sort of mixture, I guess. But So you make holes at the bottom. Uh, sadly here, um, because I have this work, so I really struggle with hand coordination. Um, so making building things, it's great, it's fun, isn't it? Um, <laughs> so um, I made, I accidentally made cracks here, but I put tape on it. But don't worry, the sticky bit isn't facing the soil bit. It's away, so it will not harm the beetles. It's fine. Um, so there's nothing to worry about the tape. Just make sure the sticky bit isn't facing towards the beetles because they get stuck to it. But it's nicely firmly, firmly stuck down, and that's fine. So the holes at the bottom are very vital because if you don't have holes at the bottom, they won't be able to breathe down there because they burrow. The lugs are going to be probably midway, I would say. They can be at the bottom too, but I would say midway is probably best. Um, so yeah, holes, holes on the bottom here and here. I've got holes midway here, here, and then I've got some along here as well. So to, to the bottom, oh, am I touching the right bit? Some here, 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 and here. I do it all the way around the sides, basically. Uh, do it all around each side. Um, after that, I would pour your first sort of half-ish soil in. Um, and then use a spray bottle to just give the soil a little bit of moisture. It's got to be moist enough or wet enough, not too wet, because wetness of the soil will cause fungi growth and um, they won't want to borrow on it, it will be too wet. Um, so just add a little bit, if your spray bottle's not working like mine, um, they make them cheap. This actually though is a Viv clean bottle that I've cleaned out and it's lasted me a good few months. So if you ever, need a spray bottle, um, then if you have a, a Viv Clean for cleaning out your reptiles, then just clean that out, you know, with dechlorinated water, and then put more dechlorinated water in it, and use it as a spray bottle rather than just, you know, a, um, for your disinfect, your reptile disinfectant. But yeah, it's got to be sort of damp enough to sort of form a ball. It mine's nearly there, not quite there. Don't want it to make it too wet. Um, larvae and beetles don't like too wet soil, they won't borrow in it, they stay at the spot. Um, the only reason why um, most stag beetles stay at the top really is for breeding um, and for food. Um, so you'll probably see them at the top, but mostly be, yeah, still loose. Probably still snap everything over, don't mind me. So yeah, just make a nice round ball with your fist. There we go. You can see the ball, there we go. So yeah, just not too damp. And then we're gonna put the logs in. Now, before you do put the logs in, please put them in boiling water to stop mites coming through into the logs and killing your beetles and grubs. Because yeah, there's gonna be a lot of other insects on there. So please make sure it's dis not disinfected. Don't put disinfection on it, but just put it in boiling water, okay? That's all you need, boiling water. So just put two logs in there. There we go. Now you can put them in a bit deeper if you want to. I've always found that sort of maybe not right at the bottom does not work best. So maybe sort of near the bottom, but not so near the bottom. Um, also, just I forgot to say with the holes, please be careful. Um, I've already said that, but I use my Swiss Army knife, but um i took time on it and if you're a younger viewer please just you know get some help from that up because it's a tricky thing uh some plastic pots can be very hard to put holes in uh, so yeah just just a just a little warning there for you and that's okay um and then just pour the rest of your soil that i've got from the other tub in here from there there without spilling it everywhere but it's a bit, don't worry, just clear it up later so your parents will tell you off. Or in my case, my boyfriend won't tell me off. Um, spread it everywhere over the top, give it a nice pat down. Doesn't need to be too neat, just neat enough for it to sort of be flat. 
and then what we need to add is this so you can get beetle um, feeder hold, jelly holders but i don't have one at the moment so i'm using a lid which is all right it, it, it has worked for me it's got to be sort of a wide-ish lid um, sometimes you do some, sometimes you do get a seg beetle that will just knock it off um, because of their mandibles so <laughs> yeah be aware if you have one of those seg beetles you know, especially the bigger stag beetles, the glass stag beetles, maybe invest in a beetle holder or a jelly beetle holder, jelly beetle holder, a jelly holder to hold your jelly so it doesn't move it around everywhere. But yeah, I'm just going to put this simply in here. Mine's quite a simple setup because I don't want to make it too complicated. It's just for breeding. So the beet, you know, the adult beetles need food and then they just need to sort of breed. Some people make it differently and that's totally okay. Um, you can either do this method or another method and that's, it's fine, it's, you know, it's just, everyone has different ways of doing things. So, male stag and female, oh, there's a male one. So, bear in mind that when you put the beetles in, don't put two males together, they will fight to the death. Uh, there's more about beetles, stag beetle behaviour on my channel. Um, well, rainbow stag beetles, but general stag beetles, you shouldn't put two males together, they will fight to the death. But you can put a male and two females together. You can put a male and then two females with a male. However, I feel like really it's better to put two because when you put two together, um, well, one, it's just easier to like breed one with one. Because when you put, when you breed them to start with, um, you need to put them in a separate. So I put them in here with a thin layer of soil. I'm using this for something kind of like a soil bin at the moment, but I was using it for them to, to sort of breed, not breed, but um, the word, to mate. So they have to sort of connect first, um, if I am to speak crudely, um, <laughs> in here first. So you need to leave them together for like two weeks first before moving into a breeding box. Otherwise, the female won't lay eggs. Um, um, if you put them straight in the building breeding box, what happens is the male won't be able to find the female to breed and then she won't lay any eggs. So yeah, I'll do another video on that another time. But um, yeah, that's about it. I'm gonna crack, I think I will leave it there, it's 12 minutes. But uh, thank you so much for watching me. And if you have any questions, I, I love getting all the questions. Um, DM, DM me on Instagram at the internet 97 If you wanna see my blog, I haven't done much on it recently, uh, but there's information there then go to www.theinsectnerd.co.uk. Um, yeah, thank you so much. If you liked this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you want to follow me, then subscribe. Yeah, and yeah, have a rest of uh, a lovely restful start of 2023.